Welcome to the Total Fitness Bodybuilding Podcast. It is your muscle building and fat loss coach, Lee Hayward. And in today's episode, we're going to dive into the top 10 foods that are healthy but fattening. And this is a perfect topic because right now we are currently going through a lose your gut challenge over on the Total Fitness Bodybuilding Facebook group. And if you've been following along with my content, you probably have known that I've done these lose your gut challenges for several years now. I like to run them about twice a year. And it's basically an intensive five day virtual coaching program where we go into the fundamentals of fat loss nutrition in order to help you build lean muscle, burn body fat, lose the gut and do so while enjoying the process. So we're currently now in the middle of another lose your gut challenge. And this is a video that I did for one of our previous challenges where I broke down the top 10 foods that a lot of people are eating that they think are healthy. And we could make arguments that they are healthy, but they're preventing you from burning body fat and getting the lean muscular physique that you desire. So you want to tune into this, especially if your goal is to lose body fat and lose the gut and do so in a healthy and safe and sustainable fashion. Welcome to the Total Fitness Bodybuilding Podcast with Lee Hayward and Jeff Samataro. Since 1997, Lee Hayward's Total Fitness Bodybuilding has been online helping guys to build muscle, lose fat, and become the best version of themselves. The goal of this podcast is to provide you with real-world practical fitness and nutrition advice to look your best, improve your health, and feel confident in your own skin so you can live life to the fullest without having your body holding you back from doing the things you want to do. So if you're ready to get started, let's jump into the show. I've got some cool things, some advanced diet strategies that I wanted to share with you. So these are my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, top ten fattening healthy foods. So the top ten foods that are healthy but fattening and I wanted to address them here and discuss it because this is something that a lot of people make mistakes with I mean I've seen this with my, my personal coaching students people that I'm working with a lot of people are eating these foods thinking that they're doing the right thing and they say you know I'm on the right track because I'm eating healthy and I'm eating these 10 foods and the reality is these 10 foods are actually slowing down your fat loss progress and possibly even making you fatter so we want to address that before I get into that, I have, myself, I have a cup of green tea. The, the way I am when it comes to hot beverages, I like to have coffee in the a.m. and then I like to have tea in the p.m. because I find that there's less caffeine in, in tea. Sometimes I'll even get the decaf green tea or whatever or the herbal teas. But I, I like my coffee in the morning and I like my tea in the, uh, in the evening. I find it just works well with my sleep patterns so it doesn't keep me up all night. But I still get to enjoy a, a hot beverage. All right, so there. A sip of tea before I get into it. All right, first fattening healthy food on my list. And this is one that a lot of people think is good for them, but it's not. You see parents giving it to kids thinking it's good for them, but it's not. Juice. Juice. And what I mean by that, I'm not talking about steroids juice. I'm talking about fruit juice, vegetable juice, something juice where you take a fruit and or vegetable and you squeeze and pulverize it and then the liquid comes out of it and you drink the liquid, right? <laughs> and then you discard the rest. Juice is a fattening food. Yes, there are it can be some vitamins and some minerals in it and all that, but basically what you're doing is you are taking just the sugar water out of the fruits and vegetables and discarding the majority of the fiber and the majority of the vitamins and the minerals and the good stuff, and you are just drinking primarily sugar water. Now, yes, there still is some vitamins and minerals and juice, but you're better off eating the whole fruit, right? Do not drink fruit juice, eat the whole fruit. Do not drink vegetable juice, eat the whole vegetable, right? If you are one of these people where you like the convenience of it, like maybe you've I see this a lot in the in the vegan communities and you know they all have their their juicer machines and they're putting in like pounds and pounds of vegetables and squeezing out like ounces of juice out of it and I'm like you're throwing away pounds and pounds of actual good vegetable to squeeze out this little puny bit of juice right like a whole bag of spinach 
right, to get a little like a shot glass full of spinach juice. I'm like, why don't you just have a big spinach salad? Or if, if anything, like make a smoothie and throw some spinach in the smoothie and, and have the whole thing, like blend it all up and then consume the whole thing, not just the, the juice and throw away the, the bulk of it, which has all the, the fiber and the majority of the vitamins and minerals, right? So again, don't drink juice. Even if it says no sugar added, anything like, like, no, don't drink juice because juice is just fruit sugar. Even though it comes from fruit, it's still sugar. Sugar itself comes from a sugar cane. That's a natural source. But, but just because it comes from a sugar cane, it's, it's still sugar. And, and that's another pet peeve of mine. Like nowadays, you see the ads, like I think... Um, like several companies, I think Coca-Cola even had an ad recently were saying, oh, our Coca-Cola is made with sugar from pure cane sugar. I'm like, no shit. Like that's where sugar comes from. Like it's it, it, sugar cane is where the original sugar came from to begin with. It's, it doesn't mean it's good for you, but they try and make it out to be some grand thing. Oh, this is cane sugar or this is some other sugar or this is brown sugar, white sugar. Like it's still sugar. Sugar is sugar. Sugar is empty calories, right? You don't want empty calories. It's fattening calories. It spikes your blood glucose. It doesn't provide any nutritional value. It doesn't fill you up. It just makes you hungrier. When you have that sweet taste and everything else, it just stimulates your appetite and you're not fueling your body with any substance. And, you know, we're at a stage these days where we can consume such an abundance of calories that we become obese and still be malnourished on a nutrient level, on a cellular level. That's insane. Like a hundred years ago, that would have been impossible. Like back in your grandparents or great grandparents' generations, if somebody was obese, at least they were well nourished. Because if you were eating all the foods of the day, because they didn't have all the processed gunk that we have today, like back in the, you know, in the 1800s, for example. Like if, if you ate enough food back in the 1800s to become obese, it was natural food, right? So, I mean, you were still getting nutritional value from that food. Nowadays, if you eat enough food to become obese, you could still be malnourished on the cellular level. You could still have vitamin and mineral uh, deficiencies, uh, you know, like you could still be in terrible health, even though you're eating an abundance of food. And sugar is one of the main culprits of that, right? It's just pure, empty, garbage, fattening calories, even if it's natural sugar. Another one, another healthy food that is fattening, milk. Uh, even if it's fat-free milk, even if it's organic milk, when you look at the nutritional label of milk, and I'm referring to cow's milk here, right, or, or goat's milk or any of these milk milks, like it's primary lactose. So a lot of people think, well, I'm drinking milk because I want the protein or I want the calcium. And yes, there is protein. Yes, there is calcium, but you're getting mostly sugar, sugar in the form of lactose. If you want to consume dairy, you're much better off consuming a more concentrated source of protein and a less concentrated source of sugar. So cottage cheese, Greek yogurt, ideally get the fat-free versions, and that is a much better source of protein. You're still getting all the, the goodness of dairy without the excess sugar that can cause you to get fat. So in my case, I do not drink milk, but I do consume fat-free cottage cheese and fat-free uh, Greek yogurt on a regular basis. I really like those. I mean, there's a lot of recipes that you can use them with as well. They're great for snacks and it's a great alternative. So like, for example, instead of salad dressing, I'll sometimes use Greek yogurt with my salad. Sometimes I'll even cut it 50-50 with some, some low calorie salad dressing, uh, some Greek yogurt, fat-free plain Greek yogurt. Gives me that nice creamy salad dressing texture, but it's primarily protein, fat-free, very low in carbohydrates because it's lower in lactose. Like, a glass of milk, one cup of milk has 12 grams of sugar and 8 grams of protein. And the fat depends on the type of milk it is. If it's fat-free, obviously there's no fat. If there's full fat, I think there's 8 grams of fat. And then if it's the partly skimmed one, it's somewhere in the middle, like five, four or five grams of fat. Again, it depends on the milk, right? You have to read the label, but... Uh, bottom line, the primary uh, thing that you're getting is sugar. So you don't want that. It's from lactose. Whereas Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, uh, especially you get the fat-free ones, the primary thing you're getting is protein. And so like a cup of, or I'm not even sure if it's a cup or if it's a serving. I'm thinking about the label on the, the yogurt that I have there. I think it's three quarters of a cup has 15 grams of protein and maybe six grams of carbohydrates, which comes from lactose. So it's like the complete opposite of milk. Another one, this is another healthy but fattening food, and it goes right along with the theme that we have going here. Honey. Honey is fattening. 
Honey is pure sugar. I know it's made by the bees, uh, but it's still sugar, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it, once you digest it and absorb it, like it's no difference if it comes from, you know, bee honey or if it comes from sugar cane or if it comes from high fructose corn syrup or if it comes from dextrose or if it comes from whatever. Like sugar is sugar. It's If, if you want to lose your gut, you want to get lean, keep the sugar to a minimum and that means honey. If you want something to replace that sweet taste with, like maybe you like to have honey on on food like or maybe like to have pancakes and you use like syrup or honey or something like that on your pancakes you can get sugar-free syrup substitutes now i know there's a bit of controversy in that like some people say oh well, it's got artificial sweeteners in it and whatever but if your goal is fat loss like if that's one of your primary goals even the sugar-free options are better because there's no calories or, or there's less calories i'm not going to say there's none because it really depends on what it is you're, you're getting but there's a lot less like a fraction of the calories and if you can keep those empty calories down, you're going to be much better off and it's going to give you the same satiation with less calories. And that's the key to staying full and satisfied and enjoying your diet is to get high satiation, low calories. Uh, another one. This is a going along with the uh, dairy ones again. Another healthy but fattening food. Flavored yogurt. So fruit flavored yogurts. We see this all the time. And I see a lot of my... Uh, uh, coaching clients and stuff they're they're talking about like oh i'm buying yogurt because i see you talk about yogurt and then i look at okay well what kind of yogurt are you getting well i'm getting you know the strawberry ones or i'm getting the, the vanilla ones or i'm getting the whatever ones they're getting all the, the flavored yogurts at the grocery store and i say like look at the nutritional label if it is a flavored yogurt like 99 percent of the time it's high in sugar i was just looking at one the other day at the grocery store it had um like 15 grams of protein and somewhere like 30 grams of sugar. Like it's the complete opposite. It's just full of empty sugar. And then of course they might put on the label, well, this is fat free or low in fat, but it's packed with sugar. Like I would rather you have fat in the yogurt than sugar. A little bit of fat in moderation, you can manage it, but sugar is so easy to go overboard with because it, it's so easy to consume sugar. Like it doesn't satiate you. You can just pound back the sugar and not feel full. Right. So, I mean, do not get the flavored yogurts, get the plain yogurts, the plain fat free yogurts, the plain fat free cottage cheese. That's the stuff that you want to get because it's primarily pure protein, very low in lactose. And of course, it's fat free and no empty calories. If you want to add some flavor to it, put your own fruit in it, real fruit that you chop up yourself. So you could chop up some banana, you could chop up some strawberries, you could chop up some apple or pear or peaches, or, or or grapes, or whatever. You could put your own real fruit, the whole fruit, with, with all the vitamins and minerals and fiber and bulk. Mix that in with your yogurt, if you want to have fruit-flavored yogurt. Uh, get some berries, like uh, blueberries and raspberries. Mix that in there. If you want to have a sweet taste to it, mix in a scoop of protein powder. Like, if you want vanilla-flavored yogurt, get vanilla-flavored protein powder, throw it in with your yogurt, stir it up, and it tastes like a vanilla pudding. It's delicious. If you want chocolate flavored yogurt, like it tastes like a chocolate pudding, get chocolate flavored protein, mix it in with your yogurt, boom. That will save you so many calories from the, the empty sugar calories. It will bump up the protein and it tastes delicious. It's going to taste like a dessert. It's going to feel like you're having a cheat meal, but it is a healthy, high protein, low fat, low sugar option. I mean, this this is how I stick to a diet is by having these, these strategies. So like I don't need to eat the high sugar junk foods because I have all these tasty high protein, nutrient dense, low sugar, low fat options that I can fill myself up with. So I can enjoy the same eating satisfaction, that same eating satiation, not feel deprived, but the foods that I'm eating are filling me up and allowing me to burn fat and more importantly, allow me to stay lean as well. So I'm not only getting lean, but I can stay lean and enjoy the process. And that is the secret. You have to enjoy the process. If you don't enjoy the process, then you're not going to stick with it. Like if I told you to do the whole, oh, you got to eat boiled chicken and steamed broccoli for the next six months. I don't want you to eat anything but boiled chicken and steamed broccoli and do two hours a day in the gym. You would get shredded. You would get mind blow Like whatever excess weight you have on your body, you would lose it. If you did, if you did that long enough, you would lose it. Like if, even if you had 100 pounds to lose, if you ate boiled chicken, broccoli, two hours a day in the gym, you would lose 100 pounds in a year. I guarantee you, you would. 
But the thing is, you would hate life and you would not stick with it. And it's only a matter of time. Like you might be able to stick with it for weeks. You might be able to stick with it for months. You might be able to stick with it for a year. But eventually you're just going to get to the point where like, I cannot live like this anymore. And then you are going to binge. And when that binge happens, then look out, right? You're going to rebound and gain all that weight back again. And I'm speaking from experience because I've done that over and over again. If you haven't heard my story, go back and watch the graduation workshop. I spill the beans, tell the dirty little secret of bodybuilding and fitness where we only share the good pictures. We only share the the, the highlight reel. We don't share the day-to-day grind or the low points, right? Like when you're watching people online, the fitness influencers and the bodybuilders and the the models and all the, you know, the people you look up to, 99% of them are only showing their highlight reel. They're not showing their, them at their worst. That's reality. Like people go through ups and downs and uh, some, some fitness influencers and bodybuilders and models and all that. They go through some nasty ups and downs. Another sip of tea before we move on. If these tips are helpful, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. All right. What else have we got there? All right. Next one. Another healthy but fattening food. Cheese. When I was in school and taking health class and when they discussed the topic of nutrition, I can remember it was in grade four. Miss Newberry, her name was. And she was teaching health and nutrition in class. And she told us about how healthy cheese was. And cheese was was a healthy snack that everybody should be eating. Lots and lots of cheese. Cheese is pure fat. Like, if you look at the nutrition label, unless it's cottage cheese, which is different. You know, like fat-free cottage cheese or something like that. But regular cheese, like your cheddars, your mozzarellas, your, you know, your goat cheese and your breeze and your, your, your aged ch- cheddars and your whatever like all the ch- it's fat it's it's just fat 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 yes there is some protein in it. yes there is some calcium in it and all that stuff but the, look at the label it's fat right it's primarily just fat and if you eat a lot of fat it's so calorie dense and the problem you eat a little bit of it you don't get a lot of eating satiation because it's such a small amount but then you're walloping down like hundreds of calories it's so easy to overeat fat dense foods like cheese and the thing is, it stimulates your appetite as well. So you want to minimize that. I'm not saying you have to avoid it entirely, but be careful. If you are going to eat it, weigh it, measure it, keep it under control because it's so easy to blow your diet. Like I've seen people say like, I eat healthy. I eat, you know, all, all the healthy foods. And then, you know, they probably make a, like, like little things like this, like cheese. You know, they sneak in that in there. And then they think, well, that's that's healthy. It's good for you and blah, blah, blah. But then when you look at it, like if, if you're getting like four or 500 calories a day from, from cheese, which is not that hard to do. I mean, if, if you're snacking on it or if you make like a cheese omelet or or you add like sometimes I've seen people add cheese to their salads and, and all that kind of stuff. Like it's, it's not hard to add several hundred calories per day to your diet that you don't even realize. And then that several hundred calories that you just added to your diet is preventing you from tapping into burning stored body fat. So you could be doing your cardio, you can doing your, your, your eating healthy and you're all this and you're like, I'm doing the right things. Why am I not losing fat? Why am I still fat? Like what's on the go? And then we start breaking down all these little things and like stuff like this can, can make or break the difference. Cause it's, it's like you're walking that tight rope. And I mean, these can kind of like tip the scale in favor of, of fat loss or fat gain or, or plateau. Another one that's just like cheese, nuts, almonds, walnuts, cashews, pecans, macadamia nuts, peanuts, whatever, nuts. Now, again, I'm not saying you don't, you have to avoid them, but you want to be very careful because it's so easy to go overboard with nuts. And it's also easy to go overboard with nut butter, like peanut butter, almond butter, cashew butter or whatever type of nut butter that you can get like these are so easy to overeat like i see sometimes people think oh i'm eating healthy and then like they're slathering peanut butter on whole wheat bread and thinking well i got whole wheat bread and i've got natural peanut butter and they think i'm so healthy and then they're eating it and like it's so calorie dense boom like that alone could be preventing you from from getting lean so you want to be careful with it again i'm not saying you have to avoid it entirely but if you can't manage it, then you might want to be, you, you might want to avoid it entirely. And I'll give you an example. For me, I have a bit of a weakness when it comes to peanut butter. Like, I, I like the natural peanut butter, you know, the, the old fashioned kind that you had to stir. And you look on the, the nutritional label and it says, you know, ingredients, peanuts. That's it. Like, it's real peanut butter. It's not 
loaded with trans fats and hydrogenated oils and sugars and fillers and whatever. It's just peanuts, ground up peanuts, that's it. But still, even ground up peanuts is still mostly fat. I think in a, in a tablespoon of peanut butter, there's like eight grams of fat, maybe three grams of carbohydrates and four grams of protein, somewhere in those ranges. So you're primarily fat, because I mean, not only is the weight mostly fat, but you gotta realize fat is twice, more than twice as calorie dense, because it has nine calories per gram versus four for protein and carbs. So the calories is like way coming from fat. This is like primary fat. And I know people think, well, I'm gonna eat peanut butter for protein. Like, no, like it's, it's a minuscule amount of protein and a walloping huge amount of fat. So it's not a good source of protein. So you want to be careful with that. But back to my story. I I used to eat a lot of peanut butter because I love it. I mean, it's delicious. And, and the way I would justify it is I, I'd like get veggie sticks. Like I'd get celery sticks and smother peanut butter on them. Or I'd get carrot sticks and have peanut butter on them. And I, Or, you know, apple slices and put peanut butter on it and stuff like this. Or banana with peanut butter. I mean, I would just, I love peanut butter. So I would put it on my my fruits and veggies like that. And I would eat the peanut butter that way. And I'd justify it by saying, well... I'm getting my fruits and veggies, right? And it's, you know, it's all good. And it did work for a while. Don't get me wrong. Like when I started cleaning up my diet a few years ago or a couple of years ago, whatever it was now, um, it did work. Like even just from, like if you go from uh, pizza and donuts to uh, celery sticks and peanut butter, like that's a huge change. That's a change in the right direction. Don't get me wrong. That's a huge change. But I was eating that healthy food with the peanut butter and yes, I did lose weight initially, but then I hit a plateau and I'm like, I'm eating healthy. I'm doing my cardio. I'm doing all this right stuff, but I'm not getting any leaner. What's going wrong? And then I started like tracking my calories and getting a bit more strict with it. And I said, you know what? I'm getting a lot of calories from peanut butter. I said, I'm just going to cut up the peanut butter and see what happens. Boom. Started dropping weight instantly. So, I mean, it made a huge difference. And, and little things like that. And then like nuts, like almonds and walnuts. Like I, I could just grab a handful of them, just start snacking on them. And the thing is, they're so, they're, they're delicious and they're so calorie dense. Like you can eat a handful of them and not even realize it. And, but you just eat like, you know, maybe four or 500 calories in some cases uh, of nuts. And it hardly felt like you ate anything. Like it's just a small little snack, but it might be like, again, four or 500 calories. So I said, you know what, I'm going to limit them. Or when I have nuts now, because I do want some for some of the healthy fat, I will literally measure it out. So one that I eat on a regular basis, and I almost take it like a supplement is Brazil nuts, and I will eat three Brazil nuts per day. I will lay them out on, I open up the bag and I count out three Brazil nuts. That's it, one, two, three. That's my serving for today. And it's almost like, like a vitamin. And the reason I take Brazil nuts is because they're a good source of magnesium, good source of selenium, a good source of, of natural zinc. So, I mean, they're very nutrient dense, but they're loaded with fat. Like in a quarter cup of Brazil nuts, there's 20 grams of fat. Like this, that's a massive amount of fat. So I just limit myself to three. If I'm eating the smaller nut, like almonds, I might count out 10 almonds and like, boom, that's, I stop at 10 almonds. I don't do what I used to do. Just grab a handful out of the bag and start munching them. And the next thing you know, you just ate like 30 or 40 almonds and didn't even realize it. And now you get loaded up with fat. So you, you got to be careful. You got to be careful with fat. Like it's important. Like we've covered in the challenge. Fat is important. But it's so easy to go overboard with it. And once you go overboard with it, then you just blow in your calories. And now like you're no longer in a calorie deficit. You're in a calorie surplus or, or at least you're in a calorie maintenance and you're not burning fat, even though you're doing all the right things, right? You're going to the gym, you're exercising, you're eating healthy, you're doing this. And then you're like, why am I still fat? Like, and then you start saying, oh, I got bad genetics or you know, whatever, right? You, you start looking for an excuse when it's just calories in versus calories out. It's, it's like if we were running a business, you could have the best product, you could best customer service, the best staff, the best everything. But if you are not, if, if your income doesn't exceed your expenses, it's not going to be a profitable business and it'll never last. Same with your diet. Like you could eat the healthiest foods. You could exercise every day. You, like you could be super clean, like avoid alcohol, avoid all recreational drugs, like, like live squeaky clean. But if your calories are, are more than you burn, like, that's it. You're not going to lose fat. No matter how healthy, how squeaky clean you are, it doesn't matter. You need a calorie deficit. Like you can't escape the numbers. Just like business, you need to make a profit in order to be in business, regardless how good that business is and how, how people love it and all that. It doesn't matter. Like if it's not profitable, it's not going to last. With a fat loss diet, if you're not in a calorie deficit, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how healthy you are, you're not going to lose fat. Like you could eat garbage. You could eat junk food and be in a calorie deficit and still lose fat. And that was proven back in... Uh, 
2010 when uh, university professor Mark Hobb did a, the Twinkie diet experiment. Those of you who were following fitness back in 2010 probably recall that because it was a huge, like it was, it was like took the fitness and nutrition industry by storm. Uh, he ate nothing but Twinkies and junk food and Doritos and all like just pure garbage crap. Like not, not one healthy thing, snack cakes and chips. That's all he ate for, I think it was 10 weeks or something like that. I'm not sure how long it was, but it was just a 10 week diet. But he limited himself to 1800 calories a day. His normal maintenance calories was like say 2,500. He limited himself to 1800 calories a day, but 1800 calories of just pure junk food. And even though he was in a calorie, even though he was eating pure junk food, the fact that he was in a calorie deficit allowed him to lose like 20 something pounds over the course of 10 weeks. And as crazy as it was, his health improved as well. Like he actually seen like his blood pressure and his cholesterol and everything else improve because as he lost the body weight, like his health markers improved as well, even though he was eating pure crap. Now, it's not a healthy diet and he admits flat out that it wasn't healthy. And I, I'm willing to bet as well that even though people think, well, wow, I'd love to eat snack cakes and, and chips and lose weight. I bet that was the most painful diet to follow because the foods that he was eating were so calorie dense and and no eating satiation because why like if you eat a potato chip or a Dorito or any type of chip like how do you feel you eat one and you're like I want to eat another one I want to eat another one like you just can't eat one right like the commercial says but you just can't eat one it stimulates your appetite the like the, the the fatty and the salty and the crunch and everything else like it has been engineered to make you want to consume and just eat and eat and eat and eat so you you eat and you don't get satisfied so in his case where he had to measure and weigh it all out and stop at 1800 calories like there's no way he was satiated on 1800 calories because like that kind of food makes you hungrier like that's why like if you start eating snack cakes or cookies or something then you're like you eat the whole box or like you start eating ice cream next thing you know you, you've just ate the whole container or you eat a bag of chips right and then next thing you know you, you just finished off the whole bag it's because it's just designed to make you want to keep eating and eating and eating so he had to limit himself. And I bet the fact that he had to limit himself in those calories made that a very painful diet. It would have been easier for him to eat healthy, high volume foods because he would have got the eating satiation and actually felt satisfied versus eating all that low nutrient dense, high calorie stuff that constantly made him feel hungry. Because you eat a snack cake, it makes you feel hungrier. Like it doesn't satisfy your hunger. Whereas if you eat chicken and vegetables and rice and, and all these natural unprocessed foods it fills you up like you just can't sit and eat endless chicken breasts like you, you you have a limit but like you can sit and eat endless chips like you can eat until you finish the bag but you can't eat chicken until you like you know polish off like two pounds of chicken like it's not going to happen right you're not going to eat that much chicken but you can definitely eat you know a big bag of, of chips or a big bag of sweets or candy or whatever because it stimulates your appetite anyway that was a bit of a rant there where was what was i left off on peanut butter <laughs> Peanut butter. That's where that all went. Holy shit. I went on that whole rant from peanut butter. Hopefully you're enjoying this. All right. Uh, next one. That's a healthy yet fattening food that is, can make or break or blow your diet. Trail mix. Trail mix. And it goes along the whole same lines of, of the nuts and the peanut butter and everything else. It's the same thing. The only th like Trail mix is, is you, you've got dried fruit. You've got nuts. And it is so calorie dense. Like they take the fruit and they suck out all the moisture and dehydrate it. So it's just this bunch of, of compressed dehydrated sugar. And then you've got the high fat nuts. So it is so, and then sometimes they even throw in candy with it. Like you get trail mix these days. It's got like M&Ms and, and candies thrown in there as well. So not only are you getting a high sugar condensed fruit, high fat nuts, but then they're throwing in chocolate and candy in there along with it. So this is just like, it's it's just the same as eating like candy bars. There's no different. Like you you could you could eat trail mix or you could go out and like eat Snickers and Kit Kat bars. It's like the same as far as nutritional value and, and, and calorie density and everything else. It's like it's basically the same thing. So trail mix is not healthy. Trail mix is not going to help you lose weight. Cut that out of your diet, and you will see massive massive improvements. Right. The only people who would need trail mix or something like that is like if, if you are some like extreme endurance athlete and you want some very compact nutrient or, or, or calorie dense foods to take with you. Like if you're running an Ironman and like you're doing you know, 10 hours a day of exercise or whatever it is you're doing and you want to have some like high 
uh, calorie dense foods that don't take up a lot of weight that you can take with you and, and just eat and you know not fill up your belly with a lot of volume or bloat. Like, okay, in that situation, it makes sense. But if you're an average guy who wants to lose your gut and get in shape, no, do not eat high calorie foods like that. You want to eat the ex exact opposite. You want to eat low calorie dense foods, high volume foods so that you get filled and satiated and you can actually achieve a calorie deficit and enjoy achieving a calorie deficit. Next one. This is a, a, a bit of a, a controversial one as well. Protein bars. Protein bars. They can make or break your diet. The problem with protein bars is most of them are not real protein bars. and They're, they're just candy bars with some added protein. Like, look at the nutritional label. You have to look, like, be, I want, if there's nothing else you, you learn, learn to read nutritional labels and learn to understand the lies that nutritional labels tell you. I'll probably make another video talking about that because if I go into it now, it'll, this, this will be like way too long. It's already too long as it is. But learn to read nutritional labels. Uh, protein bars, most of them are, are, again, nothing more than a candy bar with some added protein. Like they're high in sugar, they're high in fat, and then, okay, yeah, they've got 15 or 20 or some odd grams of protein. Some of the bigger ones might even have as much as 30 grams of protein. Who cares? Like, it's like eating a Kit Kat bar or a Mars bar or a Snickers bar and washing it down with a scoop of protein powder. Like, it's no different. It's probably about the same thing. With protein bars, you want to be careful. There are some good ones out there that are lower in sugar, higher in fiber, uh, still have high source of protein. Uh, like Quest makes some good ones. Kirkland, Costco, uh, makes their own knockoff version of Quest, if you will. It's basically the exact same nutritional profile as Quest. Uh, there's another one that I've been using lately. It's called Muscle Farm uh, Combat Crunch. And they've got good nutritional profile. High in fiber, low in sugar, uh, about an equal ratio of, of protein to carbohydrates. So it, it's good. Like when you're looking at a protein bar... You don't like if, if it has weighed like if, if it has like 40 grams of, of carbohydrates, majority of which are sugar, and then probably like 10 or 15 or even 20 grams of protein, but it's like way more carbohydrates and then way high in fat, then it's technically not a protein bar. It should be called a carbohydrate bar because that's the primary macronutrient in it. Or maybe it should be called a fat bar because that's the primary macronutrient. Like if it's a if it's a, a true protein bar, at least half the calories or thereabouts should come from protein or, you know, a good chunk of them. So uh, the, the ones that I mentioned, like the Kirkland ones, I think it's, like, it's close to like a 50-50 ratio of protein and carbohydrates and very high in fiber. So, you know, you could almost argue that's technically still not a protein bar because, you know, you're getting a lot of, there's still carbohydrates and fat in there, but it's, it's a better ratio than most because I've seen some of them that are just totally skewed. 40 grams of sugar and like 10 grams of protein and they label it as a protein bar like it's a crock of bs so be careful with your protein bars right like think of them as candy bars and even if you're eating the good ones think of them as like a healthy cheat like if i eat protein bars like i have one a max of two a day like two is like my binge like oh my god i just had two protein bars today oh my god i feel so guilty like th that's the way I, I got myself wired so that's that's my binge that's that's like the average person going and ordering a dozen donuts at, at you know at, at the do donut shop me having two protein bars is the equivalent of me eating a dozen donuts so like view them like that they're they're it's it's a cheap food it's a junk food it's a snack food but you enjoy it in moderation don't go overboard with it all right, the last one on my list here, my top 10 healthy foods that are causing you to get fat, high fiber cereal, high fiber cereal, breakfast cereal. Uh, this is, that's a culprit. Like breakfast cereal in general is like the ultimate fattening food. Because I mean, okay, you're, you're mixing it with milk for one. We already covered milk. Like milk is primary sugar, lactose sugar. And then you're having breakfast cereals, which are usually very high in sugar. And then, like, it's, it's just this sugar, carbohydrate, insulin spiking concoction that people eat and think is healthy because it has fiber in it. Like, get your fiber from fruits and vegetables and real sources of fiber, not from high-fiber cereals. Like, you see this all the time. And my, my father was like this. Like, he raised me on high-fiber cereals because he was always thinking, you know, oh, fiber is good for you. You got to eat your fiber, right? So, every morning, cereal and milk and... Uh, you know, toast with jelly. Like this was our breakfast. Like when I was growing up, no wonder I got fat as a kid, right? Cereal, toast, uh, was, sorry, cereal and milk, toast and jelly, 
and wash it down with a glass of orange juice. Like sugar and carbohydrates galore. Insulin spiked through the freaking roof. Like no wonder I got fat and chubby as a kid. I mean, at breakfast, I was probably slamming back like 100 grams of sugar in some cases. I mean, it's just insane. Like that. Like that's that, and that's normal. Like a lot of people will consider that a well balanced, healthy breakfast, right? And it's just pure get fat and become a fat slob, even though you think you're you're healthy. And you see, like I was at the the store the other day, right? And like mini wheats, Kellogg's mini wheats, right? Okay, it's, it's made with wheat, but it's like you can see the sugar, like it's just caked on the one side of it is just like caked in sugar, and then on the box it says high fiber, like, and everybody says, well, it's got source of fiber, so I'll get that, and it's. You're eating freaking sugar-coated wheat. Like, it's, it's pure... No, don't eat it. Um, what are some other ones? Like, Vector. Vector cereal. Like people say, oh, good, high in fiber, source of protein. Okay, you got a few soy protein crisps thrown in with, with your high-sugar cereal that's got some, you know, fiber. In. Like, again, it's, it's not good quality food. If you want a, a breakfast cereal, oatmeal. Oatmeal is fantastic. You know, it, it's, it's zero sugar. Zero sugar in oatmeal. It's just good quality, complex carbohydrates. It's got good fiber, soluble and insoluble fiber. Uh, there's some, you know, there's also some protein in there as well. Uh, but it's it's low glycemic. It's it's good quality carbohydrates. It's not the high sugar, insulin spiking g- crap. So oatmeal. And if you want to bump it up, like have some of that high protein oatmeal. I've, I've shared it in my high protein recipe guide. Uh, if you scroll through the group, I've I posted it there. And if 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 you didn't get a copy of my high protein recipe guide, then email me and I'll send it to you or, or private message me, whatever. I'll send it to you. It's, it's a free guide covering uh, some of my favorite high protein, tasty treats that almost feel like cheat foods, but they're healthy, high protein options, low in sugar, low in fat, and they'll help you to lose fat. There you go, guys. That's my top 10 healthy fattening foods. Let me know which ones you found helpful, which ones probably, if if any of them were like, whoa, I didn't know that, or kind of were a bit of a shocker, let me know. But I'm just going to quickly recap them. Number one, juice. Number two, milk. Number three, honey. Uh, Number four, fruit-flavored yogurt. Uh, Number five, cheese. Number six, nuts. Number seven, peanut butter. Number eight, trail mix. Number nine, protein bar. And number 10, high-fiber cereal. Those are my top 10 healthy but fattening foods. You either want to minimize them or avoid them, uh, but be careful because those are sneaky foods that people will eat guilt-free thinking that they're, oh, they're good, they're healthy, I can eat them because, you know, whatever. And uh, then they end up getting fat in the process. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Total Fitness Bodybuilding Podcast. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the podcast. And if you know someone who could benefit from today's episode, please feel free to share it with them. I mean, if you could help us to spread the word, that's going to help to get this message out there and allow us to create more content like this and reach more people and just create that positive impact all around. And if you would like some help with your own fitness goals, you know, maybe it's building muscle, losing fat, improving your health, getting in your best shape. If you would like some help with that, then feel free to reach out to me. I have my contact information down in the show notes below, and you can book in for a free one-on-one strategy session coaching call with me and we can discuss a realistic action plan that's right for you. And if I feel that you're a good fit, I may invite you to come on board and join our VIP coaching program. And if it's not a good fit, and I feel that I'm not the right person to help you, then I'm not going to give you a hype or BS, but I will point you in the right direction to somebody who can help you. I mean, I've got a large network of people in the fitness industry, so if I don't feel that you're a good fit for our coaching program or that I can help you, I'll be able to point you in the right direction to somebody who can. So either way, at the end of your free strategy session coaching call, you'll walk away with better insights on what you need to do next in order to reach your health and fitness goals. So that clues it up for today's episode. And we'll be back again next Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern time with another episode of the Total Fitness Bodybuilding Podcast. Take care. Over and out.